Today I want to talk about how O3BM Power offers performance above all. Let's talk about how O3BM Power is in the optimal orbit for most applications. Let's start with a view of the Earth. And we'll talk about the three main orbits of satellite constellations that are used for communications today. So the first orbit we'll talk about is GEO. Satellites have been used for communications in the geosynchronous orbit for decades. Geosatellites orbit the Earth at about 30,000 kilometers. And at this speed, the satellite orbits the Earth at the same speed the Earth rotates. So the satellite is always above the same point in space. The next orbit that came along was the medium Earth orbit, or MEO. These satellites orbit the Earth at around 8,000 kilometers. And then the third one we'll compare these two is low Earth orbit, or LEO, which orbit the Earth in a range, but around 1,000 kilometers. Now each of these orbits offers certain advantages and disadvantages, but we feel the best balance for most applications is right in the middle in MEO. That's why we are investing even more by putting O3B in power in the same orbit as our existing O3B MEO constellation. Now let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages. Well, one is just due to the distance from Earth. So as you can see with LEOs being the closest to Earth, the maximum angle that could be seen is actually smaller than the other satellites. You actually cover less of the Earth with each LEO satellite. So in order to have global coverage, LEO constellations are looking at using anywhere from 800 to over 1,000 satellites to make that coverage happen. Now when you do that, when you need to cover the Earth with 1,000 satellites, you're going to need to do a few things. You're going to need to make the satellites smaller physically, and you have to sacrifice some of the performance in order to build these satellites rapidly and affordably. So you have smaller payloads and lower performance on board. Now on MEO, being a bit farther from the Earth, we actually get even better coverage. With just six MEO satellites, you can cover a band around the entire Earth from the northern 50 degrees latitude to southern 50 degrees latitude, all the way around in just six satellites. Now we're planning to go through to be in power with 11 satellites, but still, building that few gives us the time to design really high performance satellites. So these are a bit larger, and they have very high performance. Now in GEO, as you can probably guess from what I've just described, GEO satellites actually have the best coverage of all. A geo satellite is able to cover one third of the Earth with a single satellite, almost going from the North Pole to the South Pole in terms of coverage. However, by the time the signal travels this distance, you actually lose some of the benefits. So, for one, you'll notice that it would take more time for a signal to go from geo all the way down to the Earth and back up again. That's what we call latency, and in geo, latency is about 500 milliseconds. MEO being closer to Earth, is a latency of just 150 milliseconds. And LEOs being the closest have a latency of about 50 milliseconds. That 50 milliseconds may not always be as predictable as you would hope. Both GEO only needing a few satellites in the sky, we can also do large satellites. But due to the distance the signal has to travel, you actually lose some of that signal power in that distance. So you don't get as high performance as the other two. Now, if you take all this into consideration, we really feel that MEO is the best orbit for most applications. You're going to get very high throughput at a latency low enough that most human beings wouldn't even notice the difference between 150 and 50 milliseconds. So for almost anything we do at SCS, MEO is your best bet. You can see why SCS believes that MEO is the optimal orbit for most applications. Mm -hmm.